Today on Christ the Healer. God is establishing a covenant here. This is what he is showing us. This isn't just some fleeting thing, fly by night deal that God's doing here. He was establishing something solid. We have a loving father that says this, I'm greater than what happened to you yesterday. I'm greater than what happened to you today. And I'm greater than anything that can happen to you tomorrow. You ain't seen the best physician until you see the great physician. His grace is sufficient enough to give you the power to do it. Stop telling me all the reasons why you can't and give me the one reason why you can. It's because you're in Christ and Christ can. Welcome to Christ the Healer with Don Allen. We've been looking at this subject of God's will to heal, and we know this is a very important subject because here's the thing. If you don't have your health, then it doesn't matter how much you love, 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 love Jesus. It's going to hinder you. Isn't that right? You know, sickness is a thief. It'll rob you of strength. It'll rob you of time and money and years of life. It's really just better to be healed. Amen? And so one of the biggest hindrances that we're seeing is that there's people that are questioning if it really is God's will to heal. You know, they, they're going to say, well, I know maybe he did or possibly he does at times, but really, is it his will to heal me personally? Not everybody believes that. So how are we going to know? Because usually what happens is, is that a lot of folks will come along and they just assume these things. Well, you know, God made my body and I love God and I serve him and yet I'm sick in my body. And so that must be the will of God. And so I'm just going to have to endure this because God knows better. And so that's what a lot of folks think out there. And, and the real thing is this, that we find those same people here that believe that, that it's God's will for them to be sick, they're the first ones to run to the doctor and try to get that sickness off of them. Now, why is that? It's because deep down inside, they know that sickness is not the will of God. They know this. Why try to get rid of it if it's God's will? Just stick to your belief. But we know this, right? We know that it is not the will of God for anybody to be sick. We know this. And even if you lay the Bible aside, which I don't recommend, but, but if you do and, and you don't even look in the Bible, why, why is this then? If sickness was from God, then why don't we just receive it with gladness automatically? I mean, how, why would it be so hard? Why, nobody had to teach you and take you to Vomit 101. Your body knows to reject sickness and disease with every single thing in it. Nobody had, had to teach you that. Your body knows to reject it right away. And the other thing is this. If it's the will of God for us to be sick, why do we have immune systems? Why did God create immune systems that, infite, uh, that fight sickness and infections and diseases with all it has? Wouldn't that be counterproductive in God's plan to, to create an immune system to work against himself when he decided to make you sick later? It would seem really counterproductive to me. But everything in nature knows that sicknesses and diseases are just not accepted. They're not from God. They're not commissioned by him. They're not approved by him. They're not caused by him ever in any way. And that's not my doctrinal belief. That's not, that's not my theology. That's God's belief. That's his belief, not mine. And so we've seen in Scripture, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we know the story about the leper, right? We started out looking at the leper we know a few things about this story. This leper approaches Jesus for healing, and he says, Jesus, I know you have the power to do it. I'm just not sure if it's your will to do it for me. Nobody's going to argue if he has the power to do it if you want to. And again, this is recorded three times in Scripture. And what did Jesus say? What was his answer to such a question? I know you can, I just don't know if you will. Well, the Bible says, recorded three times, that he reached out his hand, he touched this man, and he said, I will. I will. That's good enough for me, amen? Where's the I won'ts in the Bible? I don't see the I won'ts in the Bible when it comes to healing. Never. They don't exist. So where are people getting this from? Where does that kind of talk come from? Because it's not coming from the Bible. It's just not in there. People are dying and they don't have to. They could be healed. And this is really serious stuff and it's kind of irritating to me because you'll have a brother or a sister that all of a sudden finds a little bit of faith on the inside of them and they begin to believe for healing and they begin to reach out and then all of a sudden you got somebody with a degree or, or a certificate that thinks that they know better than the Bible that are going to go and tell people like that, well, God doesn't heal anymore and miracles died with the death of the last apostle and they shoot them down when they're just trying to believe telling people that miracles have passed away. They don't even know who the last apostle is. And I'm going to tell you this. Here's the thing. That miracles weren't happening because of the power of the apostles. Miracles were happening because of the resurrection of the one Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why miracles happen. Amen. He's always been the answer. But we've made up our minds here. We're not going to be a stumbling block to anybody. Listen, if their belief is bigger than yours, then just go ahead and hook up with them and be their biggest cheerleader. Amen. Just go ahead and, and see them go right on through it. But don't ever crush somebody and try to pull them down to your belief level if you can't believe as big as them. That's criminal to me when somebody's trying to believe big. So we've looked in the book and we found scripture after scripture that's telling us the same story. God heals. 
God heals. We see it all the time. We see where the Bible says this. What we saw that if we find God's words, they're life unto those that find them. Health and medicine to our flesh. The, the words in this book can heal your body. It's medicine to you. Amen. Amen. And then we saw what? We saw a strong spirit can sust, uh, sustain you through all bodily pain and injury. A strong, we never saw where it said to have a weak spirit. Amen. Well, it's God's will for you to have a strong spirit. The side effect is that as your uh, body is healed. Number three, we see it's the will of God for all to be healed because of the original creation. We went back to, and looked at, at the original creation. If God wanted sickness and diseases, why didn't he create it in the original creation, in Adam and in Eve? He didn't do it. It wasn't built in. It came later through sin, but God didn't do it. Now we talked about number four, uh, God, God's will never changing, right? I'm the Lord that changes not. We said that it was God's will for no sickness and disease in the beginning with Adam and Eve. We said that it was God, not God's will to have sickness and disease in heaven in the end of your life, if you will. Then in the new heaven, no sickness and disease. In the new earth, no sickness and disease. So why right here in the middle all of a sudden is it God's will to have sickness and disease? If it wasn't here, 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 but all of a sudden right here, he wants sickness and disease. Well, we know that's not true because he's the Lord that changes not. Amen? Now, we're sure it's the will of God to heal because of the origin of sickness. If God didn't create it, where'd it come from then? Well, Romans told us that, that uh, death entered into the world through sin and death passed upon all men because all have sinned. All have sinned. Sickness and disease are a byproduct of sin. Number six, sickness is a work of the devil. It's a work of the devil. Job 2.7, it says the devil made Job sick. Psalm 41.8, sickness is evil. It's a thing of the devil. Luke 13, 16, Jesus called sickness satanic bondage. I think he knew what he was talking about. Acts 10, 38 says that sickness is satanic oppression. I mean, that's four witnesses. So when the Bible says that it's evil, that the devil did it, that it's satanic oppression, then what should you believe? You should believe just that. Amen. Yeah, but pastor says. Yeah, but you know, I mean, my great aunt Betsy said this. No, what did God say? What did God say? Believe the word of God. Too many people have gotten away from the word of God and they've handed their lives over and their health over to the words of some preacher somewhere who can't even give you a half a scripture as to why he is saying that God doesn't heal. We've handed our lives over to men and not from God. And that's been the problem. I'm going to follow God. Amen. So let's look at this one tonight. We're up to reason number seven. This is why we believe it is the will of God to heal all is the covenant of healing. The covenant of healing. Your God created a covenant with you and I. This is found in Exodus 15, uh, and we see this. The Israelites, here they are. They've been delivered from Egyptian bondage. You remember the story. They get delivered there. They've come through the Red Sea, which, by the way, I don't know if you've seen the, uh, the reports there where they found the skulls and divers found skulls and weapons and, and armor and all this stuff in the middle of the Red Sea. Well, how did that get there? Well, if you read the Bible, you already know. <laughs> Amen. You already know how it got there. But here they are, they came through the Red Sea, they're on dry ground, and now they're on the other side. They've gone a few days, and now they're getting real thirsty. They've had no water, they've got nothing to drink. And so here they are, it's been three days, and verse 23 says this, They came unto Mara, and they could not drink the waters of Mara because they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. Mara means bitter or bitterness. And so these people murmured. How many of you understand that's different than believing God? <laughs> Murmuring, amen? Uh, that's the incorrect response to challenges and difficulty. You know you can't gripe in faith. You can't do it. You, you can't complain in faith. So Moses, what are we going to drink? You know, they're putting all of this on Moses. And what happens? Well, it says, so Moses cried out unto God and God answered him. Imagine that. Cry out unto God and God will answer. It's an, it's an amazing concept. I, I love it. And so the Lord uh, showed Moses a tree, it says. Showed him a tree. And so when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Can the bitter be made sweet? Yes, it can. See, sickness is a bitter pill, isn't it? Amen. Can it change? Amen. Yes, it can. It can. can. Can malignancy change? Can something toxic in your body change? Yes. Absolutely, it can, praise God. And so I, he showed him a tree, and I hope you're understanding a lot of the prophetic implications that are here. I love this. It's really, really awesome. Uh, but do we, do we read other scriptures talking about a tree? You remember a tree? Amen. Uh, we were dead in, in, in trespass. Here they are. Listen, I mean, they're about to die, and then a tree. And then we were dead in trespasses and sin and a tree. Yes. Come on now, look, this is awesome. A tree. The Bible talks about Jesus hanging on a tree. He became accursed when he hung on that tree. Why? So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Praise God, that's you and I. Was it bitter when he hung on that cross? Yeah, it sure was. Did he deal with the bitterness in our lives? 
Yeah, it wasn't his sin, friends. It was your sin and it was my sin. It, the chastisement of your peace was placed upon him. Your sicknesses and diseases is what he carried, your pains. It wasn't his. It wasn't his at all. But when they threw a tree into the mix, everything changes. Everything changes. It was a miracle. Molecules changed in that water. And that bitter water became sweet instantly. Could bitterness in your life become sweet right now? It sure can. It sure can. Uh, it, it, if molecules could change in water, then couldn't our bodies be in mostly water? Couldn't they change? Well, sure they could. Sure they could. I'm pretty sure that once they discovered this watering hole was bitter, there was probably talk of moving on down the road and finding another watering hole. You know, I'm sure that they said, look, this one, it's no good. We need a different one. This one's bad. We need a new one. This one can't be fixed. And, you know, there's a bunch of people out there that feel that that's how their life is right now. I need a new heart. This one can't be fixed. I need a new kidney. I need a new marriage. This one can't be fixed. I mean, we see people talking this way all the time. No, listen, there is a fix. It's called God. It's called God. Amen. We serve God. We serve a God that makes the bitter sweet. He makes it sweet. So he throws a tree into the water and the water was made sweet and he made for them a statute and an ordinance, he said, and there he proved them. God is establishing a covenant here. This is what he is showing us. This isn't just some fleeting thing, fly by night deal that God's doing here. He was establishing something solid here. He made a statute and an ordinance and he proved. This is all, this is all covenant language. You, I mean, you think about it. They're bent over there. They're drinking that water. Just moments ago, they thought they were dying of thirst, literally. This water was undrinkable, and the Lord spoke to them, and he said this, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, if you will do what is right in his sight, if you will adhere to his commandments, keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals you. That's big. This is one of those big I am statements. Now, just real quick, I know what somebody's thinking right now. Well, you just said that God wouldn't put any diseases on me that he put on the Egyptians. God put it on them. No, it was lost in translations. Friends, it's allow. I won't allow anything to come upon you that I allowed to come upon them. We've already talked about this. God will not allow anything into your life that you don't allow. You have a choice to make. The Egyptians chose wrong. And it opened them up and he allowed sickness and disease to come on. That's a whole other deal. That's a whole other deal. Amen. But more on that later. This is a big I am statement. You remember that Jesus said I am. They came looking for him in the garden. And, they, and he said, who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus. And he said, I am. And what happened? It blew them backwards onto the ground. Blew them backwards. That's a powerful statement. I am. I am. You remember Moses in the burning bush. Who do I say sent me? He said, you tell them I am. I am. He's what? He's too much for words. Amen? He really is. I am. Now listen, if you've studied this at all, uh, you know that this is, this is uh, these, these words here. When he said, I am, I am the Lord God that heals. This is one of those Jehovah names. This is a Jehovah name. Uh, and, and here's the thing. I don't want anybody contacting me with the exact pronunciation because I could care less. Don't miss the point. He said this, I am Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. And you have to take this name very seriously. Because no matter how you say it, what does Jehovah Rapha mean? Well, Jehovah means this, the self-existent one. The great I am. What does that mean? It means I exist. We exist because he exists. Amen? That's why we're here. Before you were, he is. Why is everything? It's because he is. Now notice I didn't say that he was. I didn't say that he may be. I am. How about 10 million years ago? He is. <laughs> Amen? He always was. You know, time with God is not like time with us. There's coming a day when time won't even be here anymore. You know, we won't even have time. And, and so your God, here he is, your God is eternal. He's not dependent on anyone. He's not dependent on anything to exist. He is Jehovah, the great I am, the self-existent one who always was, always is, always will be. He just is. Amen? And everything is dependent on him being. You take a breath and your heart beats again, it's because he is. The reason that the sun shines and this earth is turning, it's because your God is. Amen? Now, this type of thing didn't happen all the time. There's only a handful of times where you would take Jehovah and add something else to it. So it's a very big deal for him to do this. And so I love this when he says, Jehovah, Rapha, I am the Lord that heals you. Now, here's the thing. The Bible records that your God saying that he is the Lord who heals. So who is any man in any pulpit to say that he's not? Amen. God said that he is. Now, who can say that he's not? This is ridiculous. Who in here thinks that God changed? Maybe he was the Lord God that used to heal. I, I know what it is. Maybe he's not the great I am. Maybe he's the great I was. I don't think so, amen? 
I don't think so. I don't think he's changed at all. Praise God. No, I am still is. Amen. He is the Lord God that heals you right now. Make no mistake about it, friends. Man can say whatever he wants. He can preach and, and yell and debate about it all day long. But at the end of the day, your God always was and always will be a God that heals. It's who he is. Amen. But I don't want you to run by this too fast now. He just isn't the Lord God who heals. Look what it said now. Sure, he does that, but I need you to make it a little more personal. Isn't it? Is this what he said? He said, I am the Lord that heals who? Everybody but you? Somehow you got excluded? No, he said, I am the Lord God that heals you. You got to make it personal. You have to make it personal. Say this with me. I want you to point your finger right at your chest. Say, my God, my God is, the is the Lord who heals me. Point to your neighbor and say, your God, your God heals, you. heals you in Jesus' name. Amen. Make it personal, friends. He's the God that heals you. Praise God. Now, this is covenant. He was establishing something here. It's forever binding with him. It's an ordinance. It's a statute. What is it? I am the Lord God that heals you. I'm Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. That word Rapha literally means to heal, mend, or to restore to normal. Some of you have been sick so long, you don't even know what normal is. You don't even know what that is anymore. I'm not talking here. Some of you are like, I'm not normal. No, you're not normal. <laughs> Praise God. But you're about to find out, you know why? Because we got a God that doesn't just heal. You got a God that heals you. Amen. You have a God that heals you. That's exciting. It's, it's woven into, it's not just what he's doing. It's, it's woven into his very being as a part of who he is. Your God does not suffer from multiple personality disorder. You understand? So here's the thing, right? Let me explain it to you. Here I am. I'm on television. They're watching me. I, they're watching the minister, Don Allen, right? But here's the thing. I am that, but I'm also a father to four children. I just recently became a father-in-law. I'm a husband. I'm a pastor. I'm a friend. I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher. You know, you can look at all those different things, and at the end of the day, it's all wrapped up in one package. It's just me. It's just me. It's who I am. It's all a part of who I am. Those titles are just a part of who I am. I don't have to try to be any of those things. I don't have to think about how to be a father. I am one. It just is part of who I am. And so here we see it's built into God. Second Peter talks about this when it says that we have been given these precious promises that by these you may be partakers of God's divine nature. His divine nature. This is part of the divine nature of your God. And we can be partakers of it. But you have to partake of it. It's not just going to fall in your lap. Have you noticed? Healing doesn't just fall in your lap. You don't just step into healing. You've got to be a partaker, but it says you can be a partaker of that and you own it for yourself. Amen. You partake it. That's why it was given so that you could take it. It's yours to take. Amen. Amen. Exodus 23, 25, you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread. He'll bless your water. I'll take sickness away from the midst of you. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in the land and the number of your days I will fulfill. Wait a minute now, which is it? Which is it? Because here I got preachers telling me over here that sometimes God brings sicknesses. Sometimes he causes it or allows it. But then I got this pesky little thing over here called the Bible that just doesn't seem to line up to man's doctrine. And this here is telling me that God heals. Well, let's see. Preacher says he makes sick. God says he heals. Preacher, God, I think I'll go with God. Amen. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Come on now. Even in the Great Commission, Jesus mentions this, that if, if. Now listen, that means you don't just go out there and do it, okay? Don't be dumb. But if you eat any deadly thing, it won't harm you. It won't harm you. You understand that it's God that causes you to become nourished and strengthened by the things that we eat. It's not just the food. It's your God that made the food, amen? He said that I'll bless your food, I'll bless your drink, and I'll take sickness away from you, away from you. The English version says all your sickness. All your sickness I'll take away. He was talking to a whole nation at that time. Millions of people, not just a chosen few. He was talking to millions of people. Did God do it? Well, the Bible tells us right here in Psalm 105, it says, God brought forth his people with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among all their tribes out of millions of people. Not one feeble. Can he do it again, friends? I mean, this is the will of God. Could God, could God heal your family? Yes. yes, he could. Could God take a group about this size and those that are watching, could he heal us? Sure he could. Could he heal this town? Yes. Could he heal this nation? Yes. Well, the Bible says that he can. It says that he can. None feeble. None. None of them. This is why Ebola doesn't scare me, because I've got a God that's bigger. That's right. It doesn't scare me. I mean, can't, what is cancer compared to my God? This little clump of rogue cells of the Almighty. God is cancer's cancer. Amen? Covenant is serious business. And is there a covenant of healing? Did God establish something here? He certainly did. And there's two parts to a covenant, friends. There's your part and there's 
his part. And people don't like that when it comes to healing. Oh, God, if you would just. And he said, look, I've always done my part. The problem's not on my part. Because here's the thing. If you break a covenant, then whose fault is it? It's not his. And you know what happens when you break a covenant? Then God is not bound to have to fulfill his part of the covenant anymore if you won't fulfill yours. Did you hear all the ifs, if, 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 if you do? It's conditional. Oh, but, but no. that's what it said. The book said, if you do, we have to hold up our part. Amen. Shouldn't surprise us. But I believe that God's committed to his part of the covenant, don't you? And I think we ought to be just like God, committed and faithful and never changing. I think we ought to be just the same. Amen. God will absolutely hold fast to his part of the covenant all the way through. Amen. He's bound himself to it. He has to. Now look, if you don't hold your side, well, that's a whole other deal. Deuteronomy 7. Here we got God saying, I'm the Lord God that heals you. I, I mend you. I restore you to normal. I like that. Some translations say this. I am the Lord, your great physician. Now I like that one because what if the doctors in the natural come along and they say, hey, there's no more that we can do for you. Well, that's all right. I got a physician. I've got me another physician here. Amen. I've got the great physician. Praise God. There's always one more thing that can be done. You will never hear those words come out of your God's mouth. There's no more that I can do for you. You won't hear that come out of God's mouth. You better go get the second opinion, and it'll be the only opinion that matters. It'll be from the great physician. Amen? Amen. But you go on and look in this book, this medical journal right here, and you tell me if cancer's okay. You just tell me if you can find it. If it is, keep it. You find me where it's okay to have sickness and disease. I don't, I don't care what pastor said. Get in the book, in the book, and you, and you find it right here where it says that it's okay. But if you can't find it, then don't have it. Don't do it. Amen? Go to the book. Or how about this? How about you just stop and ask God? Hey, God, you know what? I've got some pain in my body. And is there anything you can do about this? Or is this outside of your expertise? And see what he says. If you've ever talked to him before, you already know the answer. Amen? Come on now. Look, you already know the answer. I mean, listen, if you've got a healer, you ought to be healed. Amen? Amen. We've got to heal. Now, didn't Jesus say this about the woman hunched over for 18 years? Well, she ought to be loosed. Amen. Amen. Well, she should. And you should too. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, which keeps his covenant. He never breaks covenant. He keeps his covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Wow, praise God. I'm going to tell you right now, one of the best things that my mom ever did was to serve God. That's the best thing she's ever done for me. Because what it did is it gave God legal right to do some things for me. Amen. Amen. Gave him legal right to do it. Praise God. He said, I will take sickness and disease from you. Well, what if it's flu season? No, he said, I'll take it away from you and make it healing season. Amen. That's what he said. I'll take it out of the midst of you. Now I'm talking about why we can believe. Verses 12 and 13 say, Wherefore it shall come to pass, if you hearken unto the judgments, keep and do them. The Lord God shall keep unto thee a covenant and the mercy which he swear unto your fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your land, your corn, your wine, your oil, the increase of your kind, the flocks of the sheep, the land which I swear unto the fathers to give thee. If we hearken unto him. If we hearken unto him. I got to tell you, this works. He'll watch over your pets. Now, I'm not big. Dion's big on pets and animals and God's critters. But I'm going to tell you something. My children, and it talks about the fruit of your womb. My children understand covenant. They understand that there's a God that heals. Because my, my little Sarah loves kitties. God bless her. She loves kitties. She loves kitties. And, and so here's the thing. We had a cat when we lived in Joplin. That cat, it was some stray cat that she took it in and it got into a fight and it had a hole opened in it. And you could see things that you shouldn't see. And I told her, I said, honey, I ain't taking that cat to the vet. I'm sorry. And so what did she do? Well, she went outside and she prayed for it. And by the next morning, you would have thought that the best surgeon from John Hopkins had done his work on that thing. That thing was gone. Then our cat here, we get another stray cat when we, when we move here, bless God. And, and this cat ended up just a few months ago with this big infection in its eye. And I said, honey, we're not taking that cat to the vet. And she said, that's all right. And so what she did, she took that cat upstairs, sat it in her bed, and made a big poster board card, get well card for the cat, and made every member of our family sign this poster. And then she prayed over the poster, sat it next to the cat, and what happened? That eye was healed the very next day. Well, praise God. They understand healing. My kids are just, they're practicing. They're practicing, amen? Praise God. But, but what else does it say? Verse 15, the Lord will take away your sickness, all your sickness. How much? All of it. He'll take all of it away. Praise God. He'll take it all away. I mean, this is covenant to you and I. If, if, if we obey him, he swore to take all sickness and disease away. He said, and I'll cause you to fulfill the days of your life. 
He wants us to, to fulfill those days, healing and strong. Sickness is not the will of God. And so what I love about covenant is, you know, people talk about old covenant and new covenant. Listen, we didn't do away with the old. Understand, if I was holding $50 in this hand and $100 in this hand, which is better? Okay, I'm a preacher. $100. $100 is better. $100 is better. Why? Well, because in this hand with the $100, I've got the $50 and. See, I didn't get rid of it. I've got the $50 plus. And see, that's God's covenant here. We didn't lose anything. Uh, we get the healer plus. We, we get the plus here, right? We, we didn't lose anything coming to Jesus. We got the plus. Man, we got our name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Plus, we get to use the authority of the name of Jesus. Plus, you get to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Plus, you get, I mean, come on, we get the Holy Ghost. Plus, plus, plus. We're not losing anything. He's added all these things to us, and it includes Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. We didn't lose anything. Peter understood this when he looked back at that tree. He looked back at that cross and he said, wait a minute, I can look back and see, yes, prophecy was fulfilled by those stripes you were healed. He could look back at the old covenant and say, yep, it's done. I get that. I get to have that. He understood it. And so when we look back at that cross, we can see that it's already been done. Healing's been bought and paid for for you and I. Isn't that correct? It's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's part of the covenant. We have a covenant of healing, a binding contract, a statute, an ordinance with the Almighty God that says, I am the Lord God that healeth thee. He takes sickness out of your midst. He restores you to normal. And we just dropped that tree right in the middle of our lives. And it removed all the bitterness and sickness out of us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you for watching today. I just wanted to take a moment and talk to you about a covenant of healing. A covenant of healing. He said, I am the Lord God that healeth thee. I need you to make that personal. I, I need you to look into the book and read those scriptures, these, these great Jehovah names, if you will, and how he adds anything to that name. It's a very, very big deal. He doesn't do it very often. So when he says things like that, you have to understand that's eternal. Just like God, it's a part of who he is. God would literally have to remove a part of himself not to fulfill that covenant with you. And we know he's not going to do that. So I'm going to ask you to please, I know uh, a lot of times when we study covenant, it's kind of a hard thing when we get, get in there kind of deep like that. But look, just look in there and begin to look at how Jesus fulfilled that covenant as well. He healed every single person that came to him for it. So please give us a call. Let us talk to you about covenant. Let us lead you to that Jesus. And you know what you're going to find? You're going to find that covenant of healing being a part of your life too, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today on Christ the Healer with Don Allen. For more information about Christ the Healer in this ministry, go to www.twoguysandabible.com. You'll find a variety of information and products that are helpful in confirming that God is willing to heal and He's still doing it today. We want to take this opportunity to offer you a free audio collection of 101 healing scriptures on CD. You can also follow us on our Facebook page for Two Guys in a Bible. Connect with us and view daily posts on on healing. Another way to receive teaching on healing is through our radio station. Get online and go to tunein.com. Once there, type in 1412 radio and you'll be able to listen to some great non-mainstream music and our top rated program, Undevourable. If you need to contact us for prayer or you'd like to schedule Don to come and speak in your area, you can call or send an email message and someone will contact you. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time on Christ the Healer.